The Kingdom of Morocco, the most popular tourist attraction in Africa, sees a surge in the number of Chinese tourists during the past year and a half. The strategic partnership forged last year with China has resulted in many big projects and implementation in this northwestern African nation. How shall we assess the Chinese influence in Africa and in the Muslim world? What is the position of Morocco in the African Union? How does this country look at the latest politics in Zimbabwe and the civil strife in Syria? Today, I'm pretty honored to have His Excellency Mr. Nasser Burita, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation from the Kingdom of Morocco on our show here in Beijing. That's our topic. This is a Dialogue. I'm Yang Rei. Nasser Burita is the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation of the Kingdom of Morocco. He has been a diplomat for decades and previously served as Secretary General and Minister Delegate in the Foreign Ministry. This week, at the invitation of his Chinese counterpart, Wang Yi, Mr. Borita paid his first official visit to China since taking office in April 2017. Almost 60 years after China and Morocco established diplomatic relations in 1958, the two countries have developed comprehensive bilateral cooperation, including a joint statement on establishing a strategic partnership signed with Chinese President Xi Jinping during King Mohammed VI's state visit to China in 2016. Mr. Foreign Minister, this is your first official visit to China since you took office. So what are the major issues on the agenda between you and the Foreign Minister Wang Yi here? Yes, it's a pleasure to be here as my first visit as Foreign Minister. It's a visit which, uh, which comes in a very important context for China, for Morocco and for the bilateral relations. Uh, you remember last year His Majesty the King was here and uh, with His Excellency the President they signed the strategic partnership between our two countries. So it will be an opportunity to follow up on, uh, on, on that very important uh, document. Well, what does the strategic partnership actually mean for your government? It means a lot. It means that uh, we have, um, you know, uh, next year we will be celebrating the 60th anniversary of our bilateral relations. Uh, relations which are long-standing and which are based on uh, friendship and solidarity. But uh, the strategic partnership is a new upgrading of those relations in all fields. In terms of political dialogue, it means more frequent contacts more exchange of views on regional and international issues. In terms of trade, it means more opportunities uh, for exchange. Is China your biggest trading partner? It's uh, today the third, the, the, third. Third, the third partner. Are we catching up very quickly? Uh, eight years ago, China was the twelfth. The twelfth. And uh, today it is the third, but the, the trend is very positive. China is also among the biggest investors uh, in Morocco. Mr. Foreign Minister, in what areas uh, does China make most of the investment? Uh, in infrastructure, what else? Uh, new technologies, uh, energy, and uh, in different fields. So uh, the, 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 presence, uh, the presence of China is increasing and it is being diversified in Morocco. And what is important, I think, for trade and for investment between Morocco and China is that Morocco is more and more a kind of hub for China towards West and North Africa. Uh, it's a platform from which the um, uh, Chinese business community could reach out to other regions and to other countries. And this is what is important in this, benefiting from the uh, important uh, geostrategic position of Morocco at uh, the crossroads uh, close to Europe, rooted in Africa, in the Arab world. So it's, uh, it's, it gives a good opportunity for Chinese uh, investors and business community to deal with Morocco. We believe that Morocco is a beautiful country in northwestern Africa, but I'm afraid not um, many actually know much about your country, despite or in spite of the name of Casablanca, <laughs> you know, that's the Hollywood movie yes. in the Second World War. Yeah. So w what else can you brief us about the part you feel most proud of 
concerning the appeal and the charm of Moroccan people, the kingdom itself, and why is Morocco the most popular, if not the only favorite tourist attraction among all countries in Africa? First of all, I think uh, when it comes to uh, the Chinese, there has been a, uh, an extraordinary increase of Chinese tourists to Morocco. Due to the preferential visa policy, yeah, is it free, right? Three, three years, two years ago, there were ten thousand only. Chinese ten thousand only three years ago. Morocco. What's the number Today now? it's one hundred twenty thousand. One hundred twenty thousand. Uh, That's a lot. Yes, and I believe China. it's increasing rapidly. Yes, and you will be among. I'll be one of them in the future. Yes, you will be. So it will be one hundred twenty thousand and one, very soon. So um, uh, it's not only because of the w visa uh, waiving but also because I think most of the Chinese uh, are willing to, to know more about this country. Morocco, like China, is uh, an example of countries who are proud of their history, about their identity, but, and trying to keep that, that identity and that history, but at the same time to be open to their world and to their era. So this is what is specific to this very root civilizations. It's that uh, we are not, um, we are looking to the future, but we are not neglecting our past. And this is one of, uh, I think, the key elements uh, which makes Morocco very attractive. The second element is stability. We are living in an area where stability is a very precious, a key. And Morocco, thanks to the policy of His Majesty, the King Mohammed VI, has kept its stability. And stability is important, I think, for tourism. Three, the products themselves, the touristic products presented by Morocco are different. We are not exclusively in mass tourism, but in a very selective cultural uh, tourism. So uh, that's why Morocco is now one of the famous destinations uh, in the world uh, when it comes to tourism. Besides, of course, the improvement of infrastructure, besides uh, the quality of services and quality of infra touristic infrastructure. The colonial past uh, may also be part of the attraction. Uh, uh, sorry for saying that, because uh, colonialism has been uh, demonized, uh, um, portrayed in a very controversial way. So. You can speak many languages, right, I believe, as the foreign minister uh, who is the symbol of the country's uh, um, linguistic capability. You can speak English, uh, French, uh, Spanish, uh, Arabic, uh, and some German, of course. But uh, is, that, is that also one of the major driving forces behind the Chinese uh, tourists uh, to look at your country from the following perspective? For example, without traveling to Europe, where prices are very expensive for luxuries, they can go to Morocco to see legacy of the colonial era, for example, architecture style of uh, the French, uh, the Spanish. Uh, you have a mixture of uh, both the Muslim food and the European food, cuisine. I is that true? Uh, not really, not because really? Uh, the, pre the colonial presence in Morocco wasn't too long. Morocco was an empire for uh, centuries and uh, the colonial presence was for less than 40 years. Uh, what, is, uh, what is specific to Morocco is its history, because we have been, we are in this uh, very particular geographical position, we are a kind of um, uh, balcony to the world, uh, f 14 kilometers to Europe. And so, and there was a Moroccan presence Morocco, Mor Morocco was present, was occupying between brackets, south of Spain and some parts of Europe. So we have brought from there uh, some cultural heritage. We are rooted in Africa, and so we have also brought some elements of our African heritage. We, have, we are an Arabic and Muslim country, with all what does it mean. We have. Uh, we can understand your national pride. We can talk for hours about the, uh, the glories of Morocco. But the unique location of your country, I'm afraid, the issue of refugees and the migration, asylum seekers, uh, may have embarrassed uh, your country and your economy. So tell us more about how you have handled uh, those refugees. Uh, what do you think should be the final solution, if any, to the issue of uh, asylum seeking in continental Europe? We think, uh, as you said rightly, that the 
because of our geographical position, Morocco is at the crossroads. It is the door or the gateway from Africa to Europe. So there is a pressure. But Morocco has always uh, dealt with this issue in a very uh, serene way, in a very positive way. We think that mobility is a human tradition. And uh, today it's from south to north, but before it was from, from north to south. We believe also that there are some myths and some uh, wrong ideas about uh, the migration and, uh, and refugees issues. Most of the migration today is south-south. It's not south-north. Mm -hmm. uh, if you take Africa, for example, out of 10 Africans who are migrants, seven are within the African continent, and only three are going to the west of the world. So uh, we should clarify first, uh, we are talking about what? Uh, we are talking about a small part of migration which is going from south, and, uh, from south to north. But most of the migration is south-south. And it, the burden is taken by the south uh, and by the developing countries, more by, by Europe, etc. Second element is that the migrants are contributing to the development of their countries of uh, residence. 70% uh, 70, 70 of the incomes of the migrants are being recycled in their countries of residence and uh, contributing to the development of their countries of residence. The, the third element which should be clear today is that there is no distinction today between countries of origin, countries of transit and countries of uh, destination. Morocco used to be a country of, um, uh, of departure because meaning we have 5 million Moroccans living abroad, which is maybe uh, almost 20% uh, almost of the population. Uh, we became after that a country of transition from Africa to Europe. And today we are a country of destination because many sub-Saharan uh, citizens are willing to stay in Morocco. We uh, uh, in 2013, His Majesty the King la launched a new migration policy, saying that let's deal with it as an opportunity. And we started a regularization process for 22,000 illegal migrants first, who were given their papers, who were given access to uh, basi uh, basic services, who were given access to education, to hospitals, etc. And now we are about to launch a second, uh, a second uh, uh, phase of this regularization process with all, all, uh, here again more than 20,000. So uh, Morocco is willing to take its responsibilities first and to be clear with Europe, saying that you are over interpreting the, the phenomena. Uh, if you take refugees, for example, Tunisia is having more uh, Libyan refugees than Europe. If you take the Syrians, Jordan is taking more than anyone else. And Turkey also, Turkey also. provides the accommodation. So uh, it's not so by making refugees. yes, it's not by making more noise that you 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 are reflecting the reality. The reality is that the developing countries are taking that. Do you think uh, those refugees are asylum seekers, economic asylum seekers? We, we, we think that there are different uh, categories, but what is important for us is uh, to protect those who are regular and to fight against the networks, not the migrants or the, even the, the asylum seekers. They are sometimes victims of uh, human traffickers and it's uh, the, the fight against illegal migration should be against the networks of illegal, of uh, human traffickers more than against the individuals who are sometimes victims of those networks. So that's why this is what Morocco is trying to do at the international level. You know that Morocco today has three main responsibilities at the international level when it comes to migration. First, His Majesty the King is the African champion on migration. He's, uh, he was, uh, he's in charge of coordinating 
the African Union positions on migration and to help Africa develop in a strategic vision regarding migration. Second, Morocco is uh, co-chairing the Global Forum on Migration and Development and Morocco will host next year uh, the, uh, the, the, the meeting of this forum. And third, Morocco is candidate to host the international conference, the high-level dialogue of the United Nations on migration and development, where this compact on mi migration uh, will be adopted. So Morocco is trying to push this South-South vision and this the vision of developing countries within this fora uh, at the regional and international level. President Zuma of South Africa warned uh, the military in Zimbabwe against any unconstitutional moves because that will jeopardize the principles that the African Union holds very dear in the wake of the Cold War. What do you think of uh, uh, the alleged coup in seeking regime change and the leadership change in that uh, country, which should, have, which should have been highly developed were it not for uh, the uh, land reform that allegedly has failed, basically, from the European perspective? Africa is at a very, uh, in a transitional period where elements of uh, progress are clear, but also there are some heritage of the past which are clear. Zimbabwe is a case where uh, there are aspirations of the people. Uh, there are aspirations of the people for what? For development. To for seek economic development. Yes, uh, among other things. And uh, there are young generations uh, Are you suggesting, excuse me, Your Excellency, that the Zimbabwean economy has been it shattered, shattered by the it is government? It is destroyed today because today. of, uh, because of uh, uh, maybe some wrong choices which were made and some uh, uh, issues related to governments uh, also. When uh, you see that people, they have to, to take uh, uh, bags of uh, of money to buy uh, to buy uh, bread etc. It's uh, it's, it's a lot of currency. Yes. No, it's, uh, so it's there is a real problem. But are you in favor of a military intervention? A peaceful, peaceful, peaceful solution, but a solution which will uh, respond to the aspiration of people for What change. do you think of the military intervention? Uh, uh, each time. The military stepped in. Each time each and replaced uh, the first lady with uh, someone they trusted. Yeah, but uh, I think we should look uh, to the whole uh, the whole process, which started by uh, some uh, decisions within the leadership, changing the vice president, changing. So uh, it's uh, our position is uh, clear not to intervene in the internal issues of countries and also to uh, push for peaceful uh, transitions but transitions uh, in some cases are necessary to respond to the aspiration of the new generation and to save some countries from uh, the situation where uh, they have been put by some bad governments. Thank you so much. You're watching Dialogue with His Excellency Mr. Nasser Burita the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation from the Kingdom of Morocco. We are honored to interview him during his uh, short stay here in Beijing. We shall be back in a few minutes. Please stay with us. Come back. What do you think of uh, the latest crisis between Riyadh, Saudi Arabia and Lebanon? I would put it more broadly. Do you take it as a, a sectarian crisis between the Sunni majority and the Shiite uh, uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon. They are all Muslim brothers and sisters. What's your, what's your position? You know, uh, Morocco has a very uh, particular relation with this part of, uh, of the world, of the Arab world. Uh, His Majesty has uh, strong personal relations with the leaders of this uh, of the Gulf countries and uh, also with Lebanon. Lebanon and Iran. Yes. Morocco has also a strategic partnership with the Gulf countries and very, very close relations with Saudi Arabia. Uh, Morocco, that's why uh, last week His Majesty 
expressed in a written letter to uh, King Salman the full solidarity of Morocco uh, against any attacks to uh, the uh, security and stability of Saudi Arabia. Uh, in last, last April, April 2016, we had Morocco Gulf Countries Summit in Riyadh and in th at that occasion His Majesty was clear the security of the, the Gulf countries is a part of Moroccan security and the security of Morocco is linked to the security of the Gulf countries. This is the basic element. Uh, at the same time, uh, Morocco has been all the time for solutions through dialogue, solutions through diplomacy and a solution which will preserve, of course, the security, the stability, and which uh, will uh, be against any threat to the stability of these Gulf countries. But did Morocco sever your diplomatic relations with Qatar? No. no. Uh, as I said, Morocco... What was your official position? Our position is based on the elements I was mentioning, uh, good relations between His Majesty and his brothers, leaders of that region. Second, we have a strategic partner, partnership with, bet between Morocco and the Gulf countries since 2012, uh, we and Jordan. And three, we believe that the Gulf countries council is one of, was one of the most successful experience of integ regional integration in the Arab world. And that's why our position was to push for uh, a solution to this crisis to help those brothers to uh, overcome uh, this situation within uh, the uh, Gulf family and within uh, the Gulf uh, house. And uh, that's why uh, you, uh, His Majesty was last week in Abu Dhabi and he went from Abu Dhabi to Qatar. Maybe His Majesty is the only leader who could go from the Emirates to Qatar and be received with the same uh, welcome and uh, have the same strong relation with the leaders, with the people and between the two governments. Now we have uh, developed a better understanding about your history, the religious and ethnic background, the geopolitical location, foreign policy. Let's return to the beginning of our interview, the relationship between the Kingdom of Morocco and the PRC. President Xi Jinping put forward the Belt and Road Initiative a few years ago in uh, Kazakhstan and a summit was even hosted here in Beijing a few months back. What do you think of the benefits that Morocco might acquire through this uh, very ambitious uh, blueprint which focuses uh, in most cases on the construction of infrastructure? You have uh, briefly mentioned China's investment in infrastructure but some skeptical voices from the West the European and American alike, said this, this network that covers the infrastructure aims to promote the Chinese global leadership because President Xi Jinping supported the globalization and the free trade in Davos and they also uh, underscored kind of a geopolitical ambition of China. So what do you think of uh, the intent of the Chinese authorities in unleashing our Belt and Road Initiative? Uh, from the beginning, Morocco was supportive to this initiative. In 2016, His Majesty expressed that directly and publicly to His Excellency uh, President uh, Xi Jinping. I will be signing with my colleague, Foreign Minister, an MOU uh, by which Morocco will be part of this very important initiative. And Morocco will be among the first African countries to join uh, such an initiative. We think th uh, this initiative is a way uh, to adapt our trade, our foreign policies to the current world, to connect uh, countries, to connect continents. It will benefit to China, yes, but it will benefit also to the other countries. So it, will, uh, it will benefit to the African countries it will benefit to those, uh, to some uh, Eurasian or Asian uh, countries. So we think it's a way 
to um, a renew a tradition of uh, of trade of exchange of connectivity uh, that which happened many centuries ago and uh, so uh, we uh, we can we value this initiative we want to be part of it and that's why uh, it's one of the main reasons for my visit uh, to China right, to uh, sign tomorrow this MOU. And Morocco was also present in May, I think, during the summit here uh, at the governmental level to show its support to it. The last question, Your Excellency, is about the alleged Chinese colonial, colonialism in Africa. With the increase of our global stakes, uh, and part of that goes to Africa, of course, and China is, of course, flexing our economic muscles as the second biggest economy. And we are the biggest trading power in the world after entering into the WTO in the year 2001. So what do you think of the allegation that China is practicing new colonialism following the footstep of Europeans, you know, what they did it's in Africa? Uh, I think it's an insult to the Africans themselves. Africa has changed. And Africa today is um, choosing its partners freely. Uh, Africa today uh, is concentrated on the development of its citizens. And uh, African leaders are more pragmatic. African leaders, they know what's, what they are doing. And when they, uh, when they decide to partner with a country, do you know why? And I think that's why I think what is important today is to see the respect and uh, the importance Africa is given to China and China is given to Africa through the FOCAC, to this forum of cooperation between China and Africa, which didn't start today. It has been here for, uh, for more than 20 years and today we can see the results at uh, 20 million uh, billion dollars. Yes, in indeed. US. Our principles of diplomacy and globalization actually are based on mutual respect and co-prosperity. Yes. Thank you so much for Thank being you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.